there's no doubt about wonderful German engineering. These Silberschnitz, and you might need a GMT to learn how to pronounce this, uh, pliers are awesome. They are made out of uh, very lightweight materials. So if you suffer arthritis or anything like that in your wrist, you'll find these fabulous. They are made for precision breaking out of uh, scored glass. And a part of that is having this wonderful structure across the top here. So underneath here is a little tiny um, button which goes underneath your score line. And then on the top, you've got this rotating head and it has a center mark which you line up with the score line and then you just squeeze very gently and by gently I mean pinky squeeze you don't even need your whole grip so if you've got arthritis here you're not actually using this apart from just balancing the tool in your hand so often these um, are demonstrated using nice clear window glass which is terribly easy to cut and break out, or I should say score and break out, but I'll demonstrate these on um, real stained glass. One thing to keep in mind is uh, my stain, a lot of my stained glass actually got from a deceased estate and it's old glass, so it can be very unpredictable in terms of brittleness and breaking. So we'll see how we go in terms of breaking this out. These are great for little bits of um, glass that you need to break out which you could also use um, rosin pliers for, um, but uh, also brilliant for curves. And I'll show you how that works uh, on a um, piece of pink. So let's see these in action. Okay, I've uh, marked out this beautiful stained glass, which I'm using to create petals for a giant sunflower. I've scored it up um, in a rough keystone pattern and now I'm going to break it out with my beautiful silver snitched uh, pliers. So we just line up that line and the little button with the score line and do a pinky squeeze and it just falls off. Again, pinky squeeze. This is very old glass uh, which came from a deceased estate. A lot of um, my stained glass is in this one box of amazing glass and it's very unpredictable in the way it breaks. So um, every time I get a good break, I feel overjoyed. So let's do the whole lot here nice and quickly. So once again, it's just the pinky squeeze. I haven't had to get crush it uh, apart. If, if you're um, nice and strong and your thumbs are working really well, you could actually break this if you wanted to. But if your hands are, are needing some extra support and a gorgeous clean break, it's just like no effort at all. Now I have <clears throat> all my beautiful keystoned tiles. Now let's have a look at um, some complex curves. Okay, I've pre-scored this so you don't um, have to get bored watching me score glass. Um, so down here I can, oh hang on, I'll show you how to use this rotating head on a curve. I'll just cut off some excess stuff on the top here. <coughs> and then we'll show, see how this little guy works around a curve. Oh, got it upside down. Here we go. So I'll break out. Um, this already had, had a score on it from the previous owner of the glass. So I can break that off. Okay, so here I can do, and sometimes you just listen to the faintest of cracks, and I don't know if you'll hear it. There, did you hear that? Hopefully you did. The tiniest of cracks. Then I come around to the other side, because this is, I would call this a complex curve, because it's concave on one side, and it's great practice. Um, and then the tiniest little crack again. Then you can turn this head like that so it's straight and then come in from the top and break it through the middle as well so very very gently i heard that one i don't know if you did and there we go and look at that how brilliant is that so if i wanted to use both pieces i could 
great for those sorts of curves. Okay, let's uh, use these pliers to cut out this uh, very basic little flower that I'm going to use in one of my projects. So you can see that I've um, cut around here and here. I'm using an old bit of scrap glass and making the most of it. So I line up my glass cutter, of course, or scorer, with this line where I want to go from the edge. Press down, make sure it's stable and at right angles to the glass and score it all, oh, it's crunching. I don't think this is going to work terribly well at all. But let's have a look. Well, there you go. I thought it was not going to break at all and, and here it's broken perfectly. So that's the first cut I would make. The next one I could do here or here. I'll just move some of the crumbs out of the way. So that can interfere with your um, scoring and breaking. So press down, make sure you've got nice good right angles. Oops. Stabilise your hands if you need be. Come around. Pick up your... your awesome pliers, little pinky squeeze at one end, pinky squeeze at the other. Now this is very thick glass, it's also textured on one side. So it might need a, a little bit of encouragement. It's It's gone to about here. Oh, there you go, not much encouragement at all. Got a little bit of a sharp point here which I can take off with my little grazers. So I have a perfect petal. And what's really lovely is this side that's all textured. So I will use that side for my um, little flower. And uh, what I'm going to do is make a tiny little lotus blossom with this one. So let's cut out the rest of it and see how the whole lot works together. Go from the point, if you can, to the widest part at the bottom. That way you're not breaking out your um, point. So if I was a pusher, so if I if I used um, this to push, then I would start from here and go to there and break it out that way. But I'm a puller, so I need to turn my little bit of glass upside down. Some little pliers, break that little petal out. Perfect. Now on this one, once again, pressing down, stabilize it on the edge. And look, I've done the wrong thing again. I want to start from this point, turn it upside down, start from the point, come down. Break it out with your pliers, or just way too easy. And look at that, looking pretty sensational already. And of course, with these pieces, I can just pop this in here and make another. Oh, it's easiest done upside down because um, I want to cut from this on the smooth side, not the rough side. So if I pop this in here, I can make the next petal. It's a perfect fit into that little space like this. Hold it, cut those bits off, make it nice and fat. So I can cut those petals that way and I'll have a lovely little lotus blossom. Yeah. How fabulous is that? I won't bore you and finish that off, but you can see what needs to be done there. And um, it's going to look lovely in a little project. I think this will go on my Gypsy Rose project. So I hope you got some benefit out of how to use these amazing pliers. 
but also how to cut some curves. It's fairly simple curves. And because it's um, nice and simple, this pattern, your grout lines are going to be perfection. And people will be awestruck.